so Thank Professor Zhu is affiliated with School of Architecture of Tsinghua University, and she is a chair of National Steering Committee for HVAC Education, a fellow of ISIAQ Academy, and a fellow of IBIPSA. She serves as an associate editor of Indoor Air and an editorial board member of Building and Environment. Her current research focuses on thermal comfort in sustainable buildings. Professor Zhu has published over 130 papers in peer reviewed journals and received a number of well recognized awards for national and international academic organizations. So today, Professor Zhu will share with us her recent thoughts on rethinking the method of building environment or carbon neutrality. Uh, Professor Zhu, yeah. Oh, thank you. And uh, now I am, can you, can you uh, see my green? Uh, yes, but it's not in the presenting mode. Uh, now it's okay, yeah. Now, now it's, it's okay? Oh. Yeah, perfect. There's some, uh, there's some delay, okay. Uh, now, uh, my, my topic is rethinking uh, the methods of building indoor environment for carbon neutral, uh, uh, carbon uh, neutralization. Uh, because a uh, Chinese government uh, from last year, uh, our Chinese government issued a goal of a carbon uh, neutrality. Uh, the, the plan is a peak carbon by 2030 and the carbon neutral by 2016. Here is a two figures uh, show the building energy consumption uh, and uh, the, the energy uh, breakdown of energy con consumption uh, in, in China. You can see uh, the left one is uh, energy consumption, just energy consumption. You can see building operation share 21 percentage and building construction is share 100 uh, is 11 percentage. In total, it's almost one third. Although uh, this is different from a developed country, uh, because in China we have a, a lot of new construction, so the building construction uh, energy consumption for the building construction process is uh, quite high. But in the future. Yeah, we believe that the building operation and consumption will, will be larger and larger. And uh, about uh, the right one is, uh, the, uh, is the CO2 commission, almost the same, uh, just a little bit different. But anyway, you can find that building operation uh, will share a quite big energy uh, uh, breakdown in, uh, in, in the country. So anyway, uh, for the in order to, to realize the, the Chinese goal of carbon uh, neutral, uh, neutrally, uh, uh, neutrality, also building sector has an obligation to play an important role. So here is a, a world building energy consumption. You can see um, here, uh, China is here. Oh, okay, this uh, EXO, this EXO is energy use per floor area. And this one is a per capita, per person. Uh, the, lar uh, the, the size of the circle is a total energy consumption, the larger, the, the more energy consumption. We can see that the uh, US, the largest one, uh, China is the second one, but there is a very, very different is no matter energy consumption per square meter or per capita. China is uh, much lower than US. Almost uh, uh, per capita is uh, almost uh, well, a quarter of US and half of Europe, half of UK. So uh, when we go back to, to some, uh, you know, that this data is 2000, uh, is, uh, uh, collected from uh, 2019 to 2020. Uh, and uh, if we go back to uh, 2005, we can see that uh, this data, Chinese data, uh, the difference between China and the uh, European country and the US, the difference is much larger than this one. 
I found that uh, this year's data is uh, coming closer and closer. So that because in the European country and US, it uh, has a uh, go over the point of uh, uh, the carbon, picked carbon. But now China, uh, we are going to pick carbon. So in the future, we will be more closer. But after that, after um, six, uh, eight years, we have to go down. And I believe the European country and the US, uh, the energy consumption per capita or per square meter is going down. And I think in China, we will, after eight years, we also will go down. But what should we do in do, during these years? So we have to, building sector have to meet the new challenge. What should we do? I think um, in this process, we, we sh should make clear that indoor environment quality should not be reduced due to carbon neutrality, but should be further improved. Because uh, in China, we have uh, quite a large area where it's undeveloped area or developing area. So the indoor air quality is not very good as a, the developed area. So we should, uh, this area, the indoor environment quality need to be further improved. Uh, this, this goal should not be stopped by a carbon neutrality. And I think the strategy, we have two strategies. The first strategy is building energy supply side reform. Uh, the first step is uh, building electrification. Uh, this one is uh, uh, in, in conjunction with the the national power grid decarbonization. And the second is a renewable energy, zero carbon energy and the waste energy should be used more and more in the building sector. I think this part should be the same uh, as uh, all the European or uh, European country and North America. And the strategy too is a reduce building energy demand. I think uh, the everyone knows that the very important road is a passive low energy design for the architecture design, passive design. Uh, this need uh, to, uh, need the co collaboration between architect and engineers, especially with uh, co uh, cooperative with uh, HVC engineers. What I would like to say today is we should provide precise thermal surveys to the indoor object, include occupants or some process. And what is the good indoor environment? According to, I, I think uh, um, we all know that in the standards, almost all the standards in the world, including European standard, ISO standard, American standard, also include Chinese standard. We, also, we all use a PME as an index for the indoor environment design. And the, the concept of a PME is a, when the mm, uh, PME is a zero and the best indoor environment. So in the ISO uh, uh, and the international standing, standard ISO 7730, the, the indoor environment have been divided in different color, category. The highest one is a category A. Category, you can see there's a, uh, the range of the thermal environment, the narrow will be the higher category. Category A is the smallest and category B and the second. And the category C, the range of the PME is quite large. So people will be led to think the better, the narrower, the better. In the practice, we also do like that. 
that is uh, the question is is the constant uh, the almost constant thermal environment is the constant temperature and the humidity the goal we pursue so this is the uh, problem okay so now today we have to i think uh, uh, face to the uh, the carbon neutral we have to rethink something I think there's three topics we have to think. The first one is what is comfortable environment? The second is what is a healthy environment? The third is how to build indoor environment is a more reasonable. The first, uh, the first one is what is comfortable environment? Well, my point is comfortable, different from neutral. We can, consider some as neutral thermals, uh, thermal neutral MI, but we cannot say definitely it is only this one is comfortable thermal environment. The key point here is that as a creature evolved uh, from nature, uh, as a creature evolved from nature, human beings have an inborn friendly, uh, friendliness to fluctuate in nature environment climate parameters. So we should uh, use a new type of thermal comfort. We, we have to consider new type of thermal comfort as a dynamic thermal comfort. And in China, uh, in South China, uh, such as in Hainan Island, the south end of China, and in South Asia, there is a very popular uh, design like this, uh, like a very high class uh, hotel. A very, I, you can see this, uh, a very uh, good place. Uh, it's not proper place, okay? The occupant here, they feel very comfortable. In this uh, space, the common space, you cannot find air conditioner because of the no, window no wall. So it's impossible to use air conditioner, but ceiling fan is very popular to use in this kind of uh, the space. And you can say that's uh, not the area for, for work here. It's a building office, uh, office building in Shenzhen. You know, Shenzhen is a very warm uh, place. It's uh, just close close to Hong Kong. Uh, in this building, they have uh, uh, many outdoor platform. Here is a big platform. You can see people here has uh, performed some activities in summer. And they have a meeting conference hall, a 300 seat conference hall. Uh, in, we have a uh, measure here. And even in November, you know, in no November in Shenzhen, in other uh, office building, they all they never use uh, natural ventilation. They can only use air conditioning. But here it is uh, in this uh, place, they open the wall. That is very special design. You can see the wooden wall can be opened just like a door. So in this day, we measured indoor environment. The outdoor temperature is 20, uh, 24. Uh, 0.6 degree indoor is between 26 to 27, lower than 28. And uh, the relative humidity is quite high from 70 to 80. But the 91% uh, of uh, occupants, they won't satisfy, satisfy comfort. So, and another place, also my student measured here. Um, here is a platform between the office. Mm -hmm. The two side is the office, but in, in every uh, floor they have a uh, outdoor platform. You can you can see two group people here and sitting outside to discuss something. And because it's working time. The outdoor temperature is quite high. It's around the 30 degree. Uh, my student measured. And relative humidity is, uh, is also quite high, around the 70% age. 
The questionnaire shows that they vote outdoors. Out, outside is a slightly warm. And indoor, the office, they, they have uh, the air conditioning office. They vote neutral. Of course, they don't need to go to the platform. They can uh, find some office, small uh, conference room. Because in this building, there are many small meeting room with very good air conditioner. So they can use the air conditioned meeting room, but they prefer to stay outside. So they, although they feel outside is slightly warm and indoor is neutral, but about thermal comfort work, you can see most people work outside and more, um, more comfortable. And you, you, you can a slightly uncomfortable indoor space, a little bit higher than comfortable. So this uh, phenomenon is very strange. You can see, um, we can co come back to see the, uh, just now uh, I show you the picture of conference. I put the data in the comp in uh, Archery, in the Archery uh, psychometric chart. You can find the conference room and the platform. We measure the data as a far from the Actually, comfort, comfort zone, no matter winter or summer zone, they are quite far from here, but they feel comfortable. Why people prefer the outdoor platform? We also do questionnaire. That's a result. And the, the people choose outside. The, the first reason is natural weed. They, they prefer the natural weed. The second is uh, greening. The third is vision. And the fourth is daylight. Uh, where few people, people choose temperature? They, they don't think to choose temperature and humidity or humidity outside is good, but they prefer natural wind and daylight. So I am thinking about what is comfort. I believe comfort comes with the uh, elimination of this comfort. For example, here it's a very hot summer. People stay outside, they, their body feels very, very hot. But when they take a cool shower, they feel, oh, it's a wonderful, very comfortable. And uh, in winter mm -hmm. outside is very cold, but they have a warm, uh, warm bath. So they also feel very comfortable. Well, the once the uncomfortable stimulus is no longer present, comfort is gen uh, gradually comfort is gone. So comfort is just a short time feeling. When the uh, the discomfort has gone. Okay. So I think comfort cannot be felt without any stimulation. It can be, it can only be maintained. It can be maintained only when moderate stimulation is keeping present. So this is the reason of dynamic thermal environment. You can see the outdoor environment parameters are changing mm -hmm. continuously. For example, wind speed, solar radiation, temperature, humidity. When the outside is warm in a warm day, when we stay outside, feel the breeze, we will feel very comfortable, a thermal control. Maybe that we won't, maybe it's warm, but we feel comfortable. Because when the breeze comes, you feel cool. Oh, it's a remote, we remove the, uh, the warm feeling, so I feel very comfortable. But sometimes, and when the wind go, goes, they, no, there are no wind. The, uh, the warm feeling, you will uh, re recall the warm feeling. But the warm feeling is not very hot. It's just warm. But very short time, the, the breeze will come again you will feel comfortable again. So in this way, you can uh, feel comfort uh, continuously.
So this uh, uh, the theory of dynamic thermal comfort. Uh, thermal comfort. So in, in uh, that is why our team has spent more than 20 years to research on uh, difference between natural wind and mechanical wind. So you, we use a different kind of tools, we use uh, turbulence statistics, we use a power spectrum analysis, we use a fractal theory at two dimensional phase space reconstruction, and also use a continuous wavelet analysis. You can see the difference between natural wind and mechanical wind. Okay. Uh, in fact, we measure the time series, the speed uh, of the mean. Uh, use uh, uh, we can uh, we and use these tools to analyze the uh, velocity time series. Now I can show you the time series of the different kind of wind. This one is a constant airflow by fan. You can see the fluctuation, the turbulence fluctuation. This one is a natural wind, very, uh, very uh, typical natural winds, uh, uh, time series, the velocity. And this one, as a sinusoidal air flow, use the fan. So these two kinds, we can all, all call them dynamic air flow. But it's a, uh, it's a different. Uh, in fact, uh, we found fluctuation. Uh, we, we should say the constant airflow also dynamic, but uh, depends on uh, the time interval. Because our skin cannot reflect the very uh, high frequency of uh, uh, of the velocity of vibration, so we feel that constant. The fractal analysis is a two-dimensional phase space reconstruction. Just now I show that. You can see uh, the mechanical wind, uh, typical white noise. They will occupy all the space. And the na natural wind is just like a line. So this is a linear chaos. That's a very uh, interesting uh, that the chimney uh, airflow, buoyancy flow like this, uh, just between uh, these two figures. So uh, it's a very interesting. And we developed the two terminals. One is a fan, we control the motor. And the second one is a kind of terminal as the air supplier. And we use a, um, how to, a damper here, a damper here, control the damper, the, uh, um, uh, the damper's uh, uh, rotating to control the airflow, uh, out, out, outflow. We do this uh, uh, chamber experiment with the subject. The dynamic, we found that the dynamic neutral temperature can be 30 degrees. You can see here, as a when the temperature is at 26 degrees, without, if without any airflow, here is a neutral temperature. Okay. When the, uh, the, uh, the average, Air velocity is uh, 0.8 per second per meter. We found that the, the, the subject prefer, more people prefer the constant airflow. Uh, less people prefer the, the dynamic flow. And the sinusoidal flow, they feel the worst because they feel too cold in this environment. But in the warm environment, or 30, 30 degree, and the, the most people prefer the, more people prefer the dynamic airflow, but most people uh, prefer the simulated natural airflow. And as you see the drought, uh, when the temperature is 26 degrees, the neutral temperature, when velocity is zero, uh, you, you can see the sinusoidal will uh, attract the, the, the higher, highest drop. But when the temperature increase to 30 degrees, the people, uh, when uh, during the simulated natural uh, airflow, the people feel the less drop. So that is why people uh, prefer 
when the warm in the warm environment, people prefer the natural wind. And under the natural wind, they, they can accept higher air velocity. And so that they can keep neutral. So the neutral temperature, so if we reuse the natural wind, then neutral temperature can be increased to 30 degrees. Of course, it also depends on, it depends on the average air velocity. The second is, what is the healthy environment? Now, I believe the constant thermal environment is different. It's not the healthy environment. And in this part of the key point is, we should give full play to the human body's thermal adaptation ability, avoid long-term exposure to thermal neutral environment, and increase the chance of a mild cold heat exposure to exercise and maintain the resilience of the human body against uh, the human body against heat stress. Uh, here, I would like to introduce an experiment by my student. Uh, this experiment is designed to study impact of a long time stay in stable neutral environment on thermal regulation. The, this experiment, uh, we choose two groups of uh, subject. One group we call the air conditioning group. And another group is a new uh, natural ventilation group. Air conditioning, uh, the both groups are uh, 10 males. Uh, age is just between 20 to 30. Uh, all of them uh, ha have, a, uh, have a, the university uh, education and they're working as a white collar working office work. work. And the, the air conditioning group, they have to spend the all day in the air conditioning environment in whole summer because the experiment is uh, uh, being conducted during uh, the the end of summer. So they, uh, I, uh, this uh, group, air conditioning group, they not only the office has uh, air conditioning, their home also has have air air conditioning. They prefer to operate their air conditioner almost 24 hours a day. And another group uh, depends on their, or their work. They, uh, they uh, every day they use the air, conditioning, uh, air conditioner less than two hours per day. So the experiment is to put them into a chamber. First chamber is a 26 degree neutral environment. Then uh, they have to enter through the very, very warm environment, 30. A six degree for another hour. So yeah, during this uh, process, uh, the subject have to vote and do the some uh, physiological test, include heat rate, uh, heart rate, blood pressure, skin uh, temperature, weight. Weight uh, is a uh, is the goal. Uh, uh, the goal is to uh, to to find their sweating rate. And finally, the blood sample. The results shows here. When they enter the uh, warm room with a 36 degree, air conditioning group shows uh, warm, warmer and uh, more uncomfortable than natural ventilation group. About their skin temperature, uh, their air conditioning uh, so group, their air, uh, their skin temperature increase gradually, and never as a uh, never responds uh, as fast as a natural ventilation group, and the uh, chest feet temperature difference of air conditioning group always higher than natural ventilation group. Uh, that means their their leg. It's always cooler, much cooler than their chest. And uh, we separate them into, uh, depends on their uh, BMI, separate them to three, uh, four groups. We found that no matter which groups, uh, natural ventilation groups always sweet 
more than air, con air conditioning group. So we, we can explain why the air con conditioning group, they feel uh, warmer than natural ventilation group because they sweep, in, sweep less. And about the uh, heart rate of variability, HRV. Uh, because uh, a higher HRV uh, reflects more excited sympathetic peak activities. We can find that no matter in the new 26 degree or 36 degree room, natural ventilated group, natural ventilation group, they don't change much HRV. But the air conditioning group is uh, HRV increase very uh, great. So that means they feel very nervous and uncomfortable. And uh, uh, the finally we show, uh, we can see the heat stress protein, so uh, 70. We found that is, uh, we, we uh, take a plus, uh, plus sample between the experiment and after uh, experiment. So you can see 10 people, they, all of them have two samples. We can find that uh, in, the, in their blood, uh, in their uh, blood, uh, HSP70 uh, concentration of HSP70 of natural uh, ventilation group much higher than air conditioning group. That means air conditioning group just uh, has a, uh, their, their uh, HSP7, uh, their concentration of uh, HSP70 is just uh, two thirds of natural ventilation. That means uh, because a uh, high HSP70 in blood shows a stronger thermal adaptation and the long time, that means that this uh, experiment shows that a long time to stay in the neutral environment results in degradation, degradation thermal regulation. Okay. Just now it's about uh, uh, cooling environment, summer. But uh, now we are going to see about the uh, uh, space heating or winter environment. Uh, here is a historical trend of uh, residential indoor temperature in winter time no matter UK or US or Japan, you can find that the indoor environment and indoor temperature, heating temperature is increased gradually. Here is a, here is a Northern China. For the Northern China, we have a, a district heating system. So all the indoor environment as it can keep warm in the, especially in the urban air, urban area. But in South China, we don't have a district heating system. So in South China, into, in, into temperature always quite low, you see. It's a, or even lower than uh, 15 degrees. Uh, that means a typical Southern China city is a, like Shanghai, Nanjing. And then Northern China uh, is a, like a Beijing, Tianjin, or Harbin. But here, Harbin is very special, uh, it's a very special city. He, uh, their uh, temperature, because there is a not, not, uh, not the most not uh, China, China, China uh, province there. There is the capital of the Heilongjiang province. Uh, their district heating system is very powerful, always make the room temperature very high. Uh, almost now, it's an indoor temperature almost uh, reached to 25 degree average. So many people would like to open the window to decrease uh, the indoor temperature. So what should we do in the south part of China? Let's say we we'll go to the same uh, temperature. What happens here? Okay. And the people, in fact, the people in different climate zone has a different comfort temperature and comfort zone. Here is my student uh, collect the data 
from uh, RJD phase two because there's an old Chinese data we provide. She used this data, data to make uh, this, uh, collect data to make this figure. You can see the TSV thermal sensation modes of this place with the SEP relation is a linear relation. We can find in different climate zones, they have different neutral temperature. Neutral, this is a neutral temperature is SEP standard, standard uh, effect temperature. You can find that um, the, in the hot summer cold winter area, that means uh, Shanghai area, their neutral temperature is the lowest, even lower than uh, severe cold area. Harvey and uh, Beijing, uh, that's a neutral temperature. And uh, of course, in Guangzhou, the hot summer, warm winter, their neutral temperature is the highest. Uh, but this area, even, even their winter, outdoor temperature of winter is quite high, but their neutral temperature is quite low, the lowest. That means the experience of indoor thermal exposure determine the area and the boundaries of the occupant's comfort zone. So not only outdoor temperature, but also the indoor thermal exposure. Because in Shanghai area, their indoor temperature always quite low. So they used to the low indoor temperature. And so it's, a, it's very different from Harbin. So uh, my student put their, uh, this, uh, their people to collect the subject from two places to do comparison. One group is a Shanghai group, another group is Beijing group. Shanghai group is just collect uh, the select, uh, we select the subject in Shanghai and the experiment also uh, use the chamber in Shanghai. And Beijing is a user chamber in Qinghai University. We found, you can find the parallel line here with the thermal sensation mode. No matter, oh, their their clothes are the same. We, we put, bring the, the same clothes to Shanghai. So we found that uh, no matter what temperature, under what temperature, the Shanghai group always feel warmer. And uh, the Beijing, group always feel uncomfortable, more uncomfortable. Uh, in the same, when, when they are, uh, they are so the sensation the same, the temperature is the difference be, between Shanghai group and Beijing group is 2.5 degree. That means the sensation of Beijing when uh, 18 degree is almost the same as a Shanghai people under the 15, uh, 15.5 degree. So this is very interesting. So this is a, uh, uh, a thermal adaptation. Professor uh, Wang Makanlikendal from Netherlands, they have uh, made a, a mild cold exposure experiment. Uh, what is a mild cold exposure? That means a uh, non-severing severing, uh, thermal, uh, thermal genus. The experiment is a uh, chamber environment that is uh, from 14 to 15 degree, something like Chinese uh, uh, indoor environment of uh, in Shanghai, uh, Yangtze River area, uh, Shanghai Nanjing area. The exposure uh, is, uh, they all expose 10 days cold exposure. Every day is six hour. They have two group of uh, subjects. The first group is uh, lean young adults, like uh, nine female, eight males. They all feel that in the beginning, that both group of people in the beginning, they feel very uncomfortable, uncomfortable. And after 10 days of exposure, they feel just comfortable. So they can accept this environment. Uh, the, the clothes is also summer clothes, very cold you know, in this environment. And uh, they, in both group, they all uh, increase the, uh, the warm, accept, accept the, uh, 
the, the increase their uh, thermal comfort in the cold environment, and they also increase brown adipose tissues. Original there, uh, the CT, uh, uh, TET figure is like this. And after 10 days exposure, uh, cold exposure, this part is uh, more uh, from fat, from the adipose tissues. And this brown adipose tissues can help them to increase energy expenditure. So more uh, energy uh, this patient can make their body warmer. And the other male, the second group is an eight male patient of type two diabetes. They get um, more benefit because it was found that a significant increase of insulin sensitivity in their blood. So that's very good for their health. So Professor Wang Mackenzie-Zell said, need to exercise our thermal regulate, the regulatory system as a part of a healthy lifestyle, increase resilience to more extreme weather conditions. So cold exposure, mild exposure, oh, that's not bad. That's a very benefit to health. Okay, finally, we discuss the third part, how to build the indoor environment. I, my point here is we should provide pro, uh, precise thermal service. The key point here, the occupant should be given the ability to regulate the individual and uh, indiv uh, to individually and the local thermal environment. And in this way, we can improve individual satisfaction while reducing energy consumption and carbon emission. Oh, uh, we, my, uh, my group had built a survey on uh, centralized heating and decentralized heating users in Beijing and Shanghai, both cities. Uh, in China, the centralized uh, heating system, almost you cannot adjust your indoor temperature individual, individually. And the, but the decentralized air uh, space heating system, the user, your household, uh, space heating system, you can control your uh, indoor temperature. So there uh, is a very different. We can, we, now we see in Beijing, and you can find also the parallel line, the thermal sensation world. Under any temperature, the essential, uh, like the uh, decentralized heating system the, the user vote warmer than centralized heating system. In Shanghai, the same. You can see the same. And the decentralized uh, uh, user, they are, they are almost there in low temperature as during the comfortable zone. The green part is comfortable zone. But the centralized heating uh, system users, they are in low temperature always outside of their the comfort zone. So this is very strange. And uh, so we can get the conclusion. We, from this uh, survey, we can get conclusion that decentralized heating with individual control has a lower comfort temperature and a wider uh, comfort zone and lower energy consumption. Oh, OK, here is uh, the neutral temperature. Um, they both lower decentralized system. They have a much lower uh, neutral temperature than the centralized user. The difference is around two to four degrees. So why uh, this phenomenon? Uh, I think uh, you know, we, we usually call this occupant perceived control. Once occupants have the perceived control over the environment, whether they use it or not, their satisfaction and tolerance of the environment will be greatly improved because the anxious of unknown change will be eliminated 
physiologically. And in fact, the human phys uh, physiolo uh, physiology, human body has the thermal regulation ability to the thermal stress. And their environmental tolerance original is, is quite, quite large. But if the thermal environment has been controlled, highly controlled by others, not by the occupants, uh, and by external force, in this case, this tolerance will be weakened. And then now we come back to the, uh, the question is, what is the best indoor environment quality as a PME equal to zero as the best environment quality? Not. For example, we, we, we always see this uh, situation that the temperature is uh, the one team temperature, but in the same room, someone complain cold, someone complain very hot. So because this uh, the, the people has diversity thermal demand, no one can change it. It's a very popular. Let's go back to see the history of air conditioning. I think everyone can have to read this story that about the carriers. Uh, story about the developed the first air conditioning system. And this air conditioning system is developed for industrial processes, not real for the human being. This, uh, they, they developed it for a printing house. Uh, you know, for the um, industrial process, they, they only need the uniform and full space air conditioning not for personal or for diversity, they don't need that. They, they need the uniform and the space control. But now we use it to use this concept to the human beings. So we will find the problems. So I think that in the future, the future development trend, uh, uh, the developed trend of indoor environment control is a personal control system, PCS. The concept of PCS is uh, suggested by uh, UC Berkeley professor, professor Edward Evans. But now more and more people is developing PCS. You can see here, uh, many years ago, only Professor Bunger developed a, PCS, a kind of PCS, a personal ventilation system that's that uh, focuses on air uh, into uh, the a goal and uh, purpose is to improve the more uh, improve air quality, personal air quality. But we can also use it for uh, the more environment control. For the uh, surround surrounding ambient can be not uh, can be very how to say just keep some data. It's okay. Don't need to control very very strictly. But the, the people, you like a cooler environment, he like a warmer environment, okay, you can control by yourself. You can use different kinds of PCS to make yourself more comfortable. This, this, uh, this is the new concept. But now they're, uh, they're in the publication, uh, and you can find the literatures. There are different kinds of PCS. Uh, but uh, in fact, the mutual PCS is not very much. This prototype is uh, provided by Professor Fangda. I think that was, uh, more than 20 years ago. This one is the Tsinghua University's chair, cooling chair. This the uh, cooling chair use a uh, uh, perfect par 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 uh, effect. And we all, there's a body cooling experiment. And this garment is used to change materials. And uh, here is a foot heater uh, in uh, UC Berkeley. And the ventilation fan, personal fan in, uh, yeah, in the UC Berkeley. And the heating cooling keyboard and this uh, cooling neck ring is published by a Japanese researcher 
And here, this one also by Tsinghua University. Okay, uh, now we are going to analyze the way of the body displayed the heat to the surrounding, from the body to the surrounding, surroundings. Uh, uh, based on the Professor Bianca Orson and Professor Bunger's uh, publication, many, many years ago, publication. Here, the figure is a neutral skin temperature. The mean neutral skin temperature is about 33.7 degrees. Okay, <clears throat> now uh, our body skin has a neutral skin temperature as we say 3.7 degree and uh, the neutral environment at 26 degree or by Chinese always. Uh, maybe UK you prefer and in UK the people prefer 24 degree but in China people prefer 26 degree. Okay, in this case the, uh, the skin temperature and the surrounding air temperature has a suitable temperature difference. Uh, use a, a, a convex, convex uh, ventilation, uh, no, no, convex uh, heat transfer and uh, radiant heat transfer. But if the tem environment temperature increases to 30 degrees, so the temperature difference is too small. So people feel very hot or warm or hot, very uncomfortable. Okay, well, if we have a surface, surface also 26 degrees, our skin can transfer heat to this surface with 26 degree centigrade. And we use a heat pump just for temperature difference. Heat pump to remove the heat, transfer the heat from this surface, surface of 26 degree to the air, uh, surrounding air, 30 degree. So just a small heat pump. We do, in, if uh, there's a reasonable way, we don't need to cool down all the air of the room. So in this case, a small temperature difference, refrigeration or heat pump technology is needed to assist the human body to transfer heat to the surrounding environment. So it's a 20, here I mentioned the surface temperature, 26 degrees. Is it reasonable? Here is our experiment. We use a, a cooling chair, uh, the experiment uh, cooling chair. Uh, my student, Yang, he do the experiment of uh, for the cooling chair. It's a kind of a contact heat transfer. It's different from from the past, heat transfer is from our body is a radiation and the convection. But here is a contact heat transfer. The cooling chair comfortable temperature of the back and the seat. The comfortable temperature range is 24 to 28 degree. That depends on the surrounding temperature. For example, when the ambient air temperature is a 30 degree, the neutral temperature of the, uh, the chair surface is 26 degrees. So that is why I mentioned 26 degrees before. And this experiment for the garment with the uh, PCM, so this is subject as me. Okay. We use a uh, uh, phase change material 27 degrees. And when the temperature, um, uh, ambient air temperature is uh, 30 degrees, we feel neutral. So in this case, high temperature cooling source is expected. We don't need the seven degree chilled water. We can only need the 30, uh, 26 degree, round, around the 26 degree. That's a typical high temperature cooling source. So then, uh, I, I discussed our, uh, the uh, one page of the high temperature refrigeration uh, refrigeration uh, ration for a uh, contact cooling. Is that we can get high CO2. For example, traditionally, traditional refrigeration for air conditioning, the system COP, I mean, the, the air conditioning the system COP is uh, less than five. We use a uh, seven degree chilled water, so the evaporation temperature is lower than five. 
quite degree. And uh, so the condensation, con conden condensing, and evaporation temperature difference always higher than 40 K. And uh, if we use a parter, uh, parter, we use a parter effect, refrigeration, it's will keep very, very, very low. Although uh, my, uh, our experiment is you uh, use the parter effect, but the COP is uh, less than one. And another problem is that they have a too low surface temperature and too high heat flux. Uh, in, in this number, the people, body skin will feel very uncomfortable. Okay. And the, the, for the contact body cooling, we just need the surface temperature 24 to 28 degree. The heat, heat flux is less than 75 watt per square meter. So the total cooling capacity of one chair is just a 15 watt. Okay. In this case, the inverse cup uh, just now, uh, then uh, just now in uh, the in inverse Carnot cycle, uh, COP is uh, about around seven. But if we change the temperature range, so the uh, inverse Carnot cycle COP is uh, around 21. It's very, very large, it's totally different, okay? So we, we do the simulation to the, uh, the office building in the different city. We find the set point temperature, uh, the relationship between the temper, uh, set point temperature and the cooling heating energy consumption shown in this figure. We can find that in Beijing, if the set point temperature uh, from 26 degree increase to 30 degree, the uh, cooling demand uh, of the office building will decrease by 70, uh, 77, 77 percentage. And okay, the air conditioning electricity- Here, Professor Zhu, uh, uh, I, think, I think we are behind the schedule for about 15 minutes, so- The, fi the final. The, uh, okay, okay, final. thank you very much, thank you. The air conditioning, air electricity consumption of Beijing office building is uh, in summer is about 40 kilowatt hour per square meter. So if we just use uh, the queen chair, use a uh, low COP, so well power uh, at every chair is a uh, three watt. When we increase the T set, uh, the point of air conditioning to 30 degree, the cooling demand decreases by the 77 percentage. So the total electricity consumption in the summer can be reduced to 9.7 kilowatt hour per square meter, just one quarter. Okay, another uh, case study is about local heating in the office. This is my office, um, uh, Beijing about like this, face to south, solar radiation is very good. In a sunny day, indoor temperature, can be uh, even in cold day, cold, cold outside. Uh, indoor temperature can reach around the 15 degree. I use just an electric foot heater, electric foot heater. It's a sufficient to maintain some comfort during the daytime. So the power of the side heating, we don't know what heating, or only use the side heating. So the, the heater is a 90 watt, 93 watt. So if I, my occupied time is a 400 hour in the winter in this office building. The total electricity consumption is less than two kilowatt hour per square meter. So for immediate, so these two things for immediate and the use of this office, this energy saving potential is a very, very large, significant. So what is the thermal comfort? I feel too heat and the warm feet, very comfortable. If we use shift the, the set point from 22 degree to 16, energy consumption, and you know, the, not energy consumption, as a, a heating demand will decrease by 68 percentage. 
So this should be considered when we put away. Finally, my vision for built environment and uh, built indoor environment for future, the first in comfort, a dynamic thermal environment close to my own nature will provide better comfort and can we enjoy our comfortable seashore environment at home? The health is avoid long stay in constant neutral environment, frequent myochemical heat exposure may be benefit, benefit, beneficial to health. The third is a precise thermal service. Individual thermal environment control, uh, uh, environment will be provided to occupants. We air the air condition control started from full space to partial space to personal, then to local. This is my vision. Thank you for your attention. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Zhu, for this very informative uh, presentation. So any questions from the audience? Uh, no questions. Probably Professor Zhu's uh, presentation is too clear uh, to raise any questions. <laughs> So um, let's wait for a couple of seconds uh, to see if there are any questions. I think there's a uh, lot of questions. Maybe questions always uh, later. So, uh, Professor Zhu, so maybe uh, I can ask a question if uh, if there is no from the uh, audience. So we know that uh, the concept of personal comfort device uh, have have been proposed for I think probably maybe a decade. Uh, uh, oh yeah, I think we have one question. Uh, let's uh, let's give the opportunity to the audience. Professor Zhu, there is one question on the chat box. Mm -hmm. I think uh, he is asking. Yes. Uh, could you, yes. Oh. Uh, the higher concentration in uh, of SST seventy in blood indicate a better uh, uh, heat stress, uh, a better ability to against against the heat stress. So that is why this protein is a, a heat stress protein. And another. Another is a comment. No. I, I think you you asked uh, you you just now you asked what question. Uh, that means, uh, mm, in fact, uh, in in the past, people always think uh, hold control hold uh, automatically control for the whole space is the higher the high check. And also, Professor Funger uh, give the concept of a uh, task and ambient environment for quite long time, but very difficult to realize. But the problem is, in fact, the personal control or local control has a more um, technical barriers than the full space control. That is why in the past, we, are, we can only use uh, the full space control. And also has uh, maybe has the wrong concept that is full space control is better than others. So uh, now uh, you can see the the science and technology uh, developed very fast, and we can do maybe we can in the near future. Now we can find more and more technology to realize this technology. Uh, to, to this purpose. I believe in the future, we can uh, combine uh, new material, uh, IT, uh, and, uh, uh, some, uh, and also uh, biology, technology together. We can realize this purpose. 
Yes, I totally agree. I think by integrating the big data analytics, the Internet of Things technology, as well as the personal comfort device, we can achieve a more healthy indoor environment uh, with less energy consumption. So probably with that, we are going to end like today's seminar because we are already 20 minutes behind the schedule. And thank you so much for joining us today. I know lots of things are going on in your life and I appreciate how valuable your time is. And I hope uh, you will find uh, these talks are interesting, inspiring and insightful, uh, and insightful. I would also like to remind you that the second seminar of this series will be hosted on the same time on 11th of May. And I really look forward to seeing you again in two weeks. Uh, thank you so much. And I think that's it. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you for everyone.